may have seen the story in the Mail Tribune this morning that uh, the county commissioners yesterday decided to fund not one, but two economic development type of uh, partnerships. And joining me here in studio is uh, one of the people who's the subject of uh, one of the partnerships, and that's Mark Monholly. Hey, Mark, how are you doing this morning? Morning, Bill. Good, how are you doing? All right, so So Ready is going to get its full budget, what, 160, 150, 160,000 a year, I guess? Somewhere in that range. Yeah, and you're going to get 100,000, I guess, for five years? Uh, it's a three year commitment. Three year point. commitment, okay, 100,000. So um, we know that you've been connected with uh, Sustainable Valley. You resigned from that. You're no longer part of Sustainable Valley. Correct. With that economic, uh, what was it, the business accelerator? Yeah, business accelerator. Program. Correct. And so what's the difference between what you were trying to do with Sustainable Valley? And what is this going to be doing? Yeah, Sustainable Valley is a 501c3 that came together, uh, you know, out of my sheer frustration, better to channel the energy, um, you know, to, to tap into it, harness it, and channel it for a greater purpose. And I was really frustrated with what I call the never-ending self-fulfilled prophecy of self-imposed limitations with regard to our regional economic development mm -hmm. uh, structure, the way we're set up right now. I was trying to get additional funding for So Ready at the time, was unsuccessful in doing so, and that's you, why I started Because you have Valley. been on uh, So Ready. I've been on the So Ready board for board. eight years. Right? Yeah. Are you still there? Was, yeah, as far as I know. So you're, sti <laughs> so you're still on the board, all right. Yeah, uh, six years on the executive committee, two years as a board president, so... You know, I decided it's better to light a candle than curse the darkness, and, and a lot of people stand on the sidelines of life and, you know, play the armchair quarterback and second-guess every play on the field. But And the Rogue Valley, we're a few players short, and we get our butts kicked, and, you know, we're getting our lunch handed to us all the time. So that's why I started Sustainable Valley. Sustainable Valley basically is a business accelerator, and university studies show, you know, the majority of businesses fail. Most businesses don't make it through the first year. Those that do, most don't make it to fifth. Those that do, most don't make it to tenth, et cetera. And it has to do with lack of capitalization. Well, it's, there's issues. a whole bunch of things that take... That you might be a good painter, but you might not know how to have a painting business and how to market and run the account and the marketing and all that stuff, sort of, all that sort of thing. So the point is, with business accelerators, 84% that go through a three-year program will succeed, and 87% of those will stay in the communities where they're incubated. So I thought it's a great way to reverse the rate of failure of business in our community, especially if we focus on those that have got hockey stick growth potential to create family wage jobs. Okay, so what is giving you $100,000 a year for three years? What is that going to get us? This is totally different. This is a totally different play. I realize, you know, Sustainable Valley, that's a 25-year that's a regional transformational play to reverse the rate of failure with those businesses that have got hockey stick growth potential. Uh-huh. Other communities across the country, right, right now, look, there's a big difference, between, and it's a roundabout way of answering your question, Bill. There's a big difference between Oregon and California, right? Uh, even, even with regard to business conditions. I'm as guilty as anybody else is of drinking the negative Kool-Aid and saying, oh, Oregon's so not friendly to business, and Jackson County's not friendly to business, and Medford's not friendly to business, and woe is me. Well, when you look at the business development rate, I, I don't think you're going wrong by saying that. No, I think that there's issues to work on. I'm not, I'm not trivializing that. Okay. But, but the reality is, if you look at us compared to California, for overall business taxation, with one being good, Oregon ranks number 12 in the United States. California is number 48. Okay? Overall, oh, that's for business taxation, right? Business taxation. And overall business rankings were number 17, which is nothing to write home about. There's room, there's room for improvement. What about the... Uh, but California is 47. Yeah, what about the, the land use and permitting process? Because to me, I think that's where we are just getting I, killed. I know, but the voters brought that in back in the 70s. Everybody thought it was the greatest thing ever and all the rest of the states would follow us. We've got the most restrictive zoning overlay of all 50 states, and it was brought in by the voters. So that's going to have to be changed legislatively and that's you, gonna you be can't fix that all right uh, yeah so uh, so then still here it is you're gonna be hired in here mm -hmm. a contract for three years mm -hmm. what do you, you travel down to the san francisco bay area to watch the world series uh, I mean, what? no no what are you doing thanks for asking the question bill uh, right. i looked around the country for best in class modeling and i found a community that brought in 75 to 80 businesses out of california from southern california all the way up to the Coeur d'Alene spokane region there's a gentleman by the name of bob potter he's a legend up there and he was a, a telecom exec down in Pasadena. So he moves up there and sees that community's unrealized And where potential. did he move? From Pasadena up to the Coeur d'Alene area. To Coeur d'Alene, okay. And that region. So he moves to Idaho. Yeah, so he moves up there and sees that community's unrealized potential, gets a burden and a passion like I have to help his community. And, and, he, and he worked in partnership with his existing economic development enterprises, but he brought up basically 75 to 80 businesses. So I'm looking at that saying, well, you know what? As much as we like to, you know, say don't Californicate Oregon and all this stuff, don't, you know, whatever the door, don't, don't mm -hmm. let the door hit you on the way out, et cetera. The reality is, Bill, every other person you run into just about, maybe they're not a native of California. I'm not, but I passed through there before I got here. And so did every, just about every other person in this region. Mm -hmm. There was 150,000 uh, Californians that immigrated into Oregon from 2000 to 2010. That represented over $4 billion in income for the state. 
So they're coming anyway. The question is, what targeted demographic should we go after to make our regional economy better? Well, it seems that up to this point that uh, we have been targeting liberal vineyard growers and uh, retirees. Yeah. That, that seems to be, if, I'm, if I was to just, uh, and by the way, if you're a conservative vineyard grower, please don't <laughs> take this as a smack. I'm just looking at the political bent on the uh, signs as I drive around town. But that seems to be what we've targeted. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know if necessarily targeting retirees is a good deal, but that is part of the policy around here. Yeah. It's like retirees, wine. That seems to be what we're going for. Yeah. You know, there was 2,749 people that immigrated into, into, into Jackson County over the last three years, okay? Mm -hmm. Our, we, have a, we have a declining birth rate and a raising death rate. And, and the state economists say in rural Oregonian communities, which we don't consider ourselves, but when your death rate exceeds your birth rate, you're in trouble in the future because you're not replacing your future workforce and the leaders of your community. That is happening right now in Jackson and Josephine County. And so the reason is because we're, we're a real magnet for retirees, particularly from the West Coast. So we've got an older generation coming in one side of the valley who are dependent upon my, primarily on transfer payments, you know, Social Security, retirement, yep. et cetera. Yep. There's not a strong economic multiplier. And you've got your young people leaving the other side of the valley. And I don't blame them because right. you, There's get, a lack of opportunity. you get out of college. I mean, do you want to sit around here and be a barista or do you want to go to work for Intel? That's exactly right. So we've got industrial land assets in this two-county region that have been sitting vacant, Bill, for decades. Decades, decades and decades and decades and decades. And it reminds me of, you know, Confucius said, the man who stands on mountaintop with mouth wide open yeah. waits a long time for roast duck to drop in. Yeah, absolutely. And so, so that, we that, stand that, here in the flyover. So, so we have the, all this open land, but why is it, now I'm going off of what uh, Kurt Ankerberg, who's a county commissioner candidate, he emails me last night. He says that uh, Burl has about the only shovel-ready land around here. Why is that? Why do we only have that as, some, as the only shovel-ready land? You're, I don't disagree with that. Burl, you know, to their credit, they made an investment to get that state-certified shovel-ready. So basically, it, it, it takes a lot of the roadblocks out of the way associated with the development of land. I think other, other people should do the same thing, but, but that land's been sitting there vacant that they got state certified shovel ready mm -hmm. for 70 years, including 10 years since they got it state certified. So again, we're standing here, like Confucius said, and we're, okay. we're in the flyover between the Silicon Valley and the Silicon Forest Bill. There's billions so of dollars. So what does you going down there, how, do, how does that help? Because I see one of the problems that you're going to have trying to get high tech, first off, you're bringing up blue high tech people. <laughs> On a political point of view, I don't know if I like that. But still, yeah, we need the economic development. Second of all, though, uh, the area still has crappy air service. It has a wonderful airport, but still crappy, expensive air service. And so you're not going to get big relocations until we get that solved. I'm not looking for big relocations. We're looking for the right size of company that will fit in the fabric of this community with the resource capacity that we've got to work with. It's a very strategic, detailed plan. Mm -hmm. You know, I, feel, I don't know how newspaper reporters do it. We think they don't always get it right. But he's, you know, Greg Stiles had to consolidate a two and a half hour discussion into just a, a little bit of, you know, yeah, 800 words. Word. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's a tough thing to do. There's a lot more that goes on to this than what's in the newspaper article. So you go down there, and what do you say? Hey, we've got buildable land. Hey, we've got people desperate to go to work. I mean, how do you sell the Rogue Valley then on, on a three year contract? That, that, that's, that's a good question. So looking again at best in class uh, modeling for how this is done, the gentleman that I want to emulate. Again, that brought in 75 to 80 businesses. Mm -hmm. It's a three-year play. From the time you first make contact with these companies to the time you're putting a shovel in the ground, it's about a three-year span. Some sooner, some longer. It's about three years on average, okay? This is a guy that knows what he's talking about. He did it and totally changed their economy up there with hundreds of millions of dollars of private sector capital investment and in their vacant industrial land assets, et cetera, okay. right? Okay. So like, that's, that makes a tremendous amount of sense. So basically what I'm doing is reverse engineering what he did and going after our top five high-tech sectors. And what do you think those are? Well, I know what they are. It's not what I think they are. I know what they are. Anybody what are the top the, five high-tech yeah, sectors? Any, anybody Let people the, know here, Mark. Absolutely. Mark Von Holly's here, by the way. Thanks, Bill. All right. Thanks for asking the question. So give me one split <laughs> second here, and I'm going to tell you what they are, because unfortunately I don't have them memorized. They are electronic instrument manufacturing. Okay. There are, for example, there are three companies in Josephine County, private companies, that provide about 186 jobs that average about 80 thousand dollars a piece not including benefits economic development 101 in josephine county that's so broke they can't hardly afford to pay attention two deputies on the sheriff's department i have visions of barney fife mm. bobbling around mayberry asking andy if he could put the bullet in the gun right right and, and if you live in josephine county i don't mean to be disrespectful it just kind of hits my funny bone it's a sad tragic statement of where things are but i would look and say you know what we got a cluster i would say three companies is a cluster sure. that do the same thing that have almost 200 jobs that's 15 million dollars in payroll annually 
to that community. Okay, so you want to target uh, electronic instrument manufacturing, yeah, good one. software publishers, and, and I only went through the government, the government defines high tech by 14 different NACE sector codes. So I went and looked at all those codes and said, how many, how many companies do we have represented in our two county region among those 14 codes? Bill, venture to guess. Uh, 10? 277. Really? 2,753 jobs. They're relatively so we a, small. We have a lot more of this already. So Exactly. All right. So is the is the goal then to explain that we already have people like this here yes. that are working properly yes, yes, and yes. then try to persuade? Are you going out there handing out tax credits or we already dangling? Have, we already have certain incentives lined up with the enterprise zones. You know, if you, if you bring a new company into the Valley that pays 150% of our median wage, which is the targeted demographic I'm going after, Bill. Okay. Our five sectors, which we didn't get into the other four, but our five sectors pay on average about $64,000 annually. That's 150, 170 some odd percent of our median wage. Okay, so I am far, far be it for me to, and like anybody else listening would say, yeah, we'd like to see more of these jobs here. This yeah. would be wonderful, all right? Uh, you say it's going to be a, part of a long-term plan, though. So already has been around a long, long time, mm -hmm. all right? Now, I know you're uh, on the board, but you're... Not as uh, direct. This is not having anything to do with Cell Ready. Cell Ready has its own contract. We'll talk with them another time, I uh -huh. suppose. Sure. But what what good results have we seen from all of this tax money going into these sort of, organiz uh, sort of organizations? Because it seems to me that uh, we've had Amy's Kitchen, and that's been about it. Now, am I wrong about that? Amy's Kitchen has been it. That's been the one success story for all these years of talking about uh, regional economic development. Yeah, and, you know, to me, if that's our crowning glory, I'd be real careful about, you know, being, being too proud about that. You know, sure, we got a large business in, but, yeah. you know, and I don't want to talk about... And by about, the way, I'm not going to uh, crap on them. That's what I'm talking I. about. I don't, I, don't want, you know? I don't want to either, Bill. So Glad they're here. Yeah, exactly. But there's, still. there's nothing but good you could say about it. But let's just let's not talk about that company. Let's just talk about that industry. Value-added food production in this state pays on average about $30,000 annually fully loaded. That's more than 20% below Jackson County's already low median wage that has us in the bottom 4% for the lowest wages in the country. There's a principle of an economic multiplier. For every dollar that's made here that circulates through the economy, it's got a multiplier of at least three. Well, when people are living below your standard wage, they don't have any economic multiplier. There's an economic divider. They can't afford to sustain the basic needs of life. So everybody else has to step up, and there's major donor fatigue because we have all these auctions and nonprofits. There's a great culture of caring here. That, it, it, okay, it's too, I get it's that. too so, much born of economic necessity. All right, so you end up going, you go to these places, and you try to persuade them. I mean, how do you try? So, okay, so you say, hey, come to the Rogue Valley, and then they say, yeah, so what? You know what? There's a lot of technology companies here already, including expatriates out of California. They looked at the they looked at the airport and said, "Gosh, you know, it's 500 bucks to fly into San Francisco, and mm -hmm. the flights might not even make it." And you know, it, you know, the airport gets fogged in, and there's smoke in the smoky skies in the summer. They overcame those objections because their the intentional lifestyle choice that drove them to come here prevailed, and they said, "Well, I'll deal with those things." And we're going to find people that feel the same way. I hope you're right. You about know, that. It's a, California is screwed up as Oregon is. California's far worse. And there's businesses leaving there on a regular basis, and those communities that aren't in identity crisis like we've been, that make the right investment in economic development, do very well for themselves by recruiting those outward-bound companies to get their own economies going. Right, there's Mark, no reason why we shouldn't do that. All right, Mark, I don't have any more time to talk. This was just supposed <laughs> to be a quick swing-in. Sure. And will you come back on as you end up going down to the Bay Area Absolutely. and start talking with more of these people? You bet. I, I want to kind of get uh, some progress update from you. Sure. Because people are going to say, yeah, $100,000 a year in the grand scheme of things, this is not huge money, even right. in Jackson County's budget. Right. 160000 for us, so ready, roughly speaking. But I think that uh, there are a lot of people that are saying, all right, we just don't want to be throwing money down the, uh, the Mark Von Holly or the Soul Ready rat hole. Right, and I gave them a whole performance metrics on how many companies are going to contact, actually visit, and bring up here, and what the goal is for, for actually getting companies to relocate or expand up here, and the number of jobs, et cetera. There's a whole pro performance right. metrics. You get some, uh, some software engineers up here in developing <laughs> and opening up some firms or some uh, instrument manufacturers. I'll be toasting you, okay? Sounds good. Yeah. Hey, get thanks, back to work, thanks, okay? Thanks, Bill. Absolutely. Back to right. mines. <laughs> 736. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Mark Von Holly at FM 1067, AM 1440, KMED.